Welcome back to the Inside View Real Estate Podcast, everybody. Today, we are going to be talking about CNBC's new article saying that the pricing bubble is going to wipe out everybody's home equity. Stay tuned. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to the Inside View Real Estate Podcast. I am your host, Josh Zuniga. I am with the wonderful Carl Freund, my co-host. And today, we're going to talk about an exciting article that CNBC just put out saying that the pricing bubble is going to wipe out all of the home equity, right? The market does correct. How much wealth do you think could be wiped out? Well, I, I, I feel bad for the people that bought homes over the past year because they're the ones that paid the very elevated prices. So for someone who put 5% down and you see home prices pull back, let's just say 10% for those, you know, relative to a year ago, well, their equity is basically wiped out. Yeah, uh, a little bit of drama, obviously, for news, right? There so is, yeah, a this, it's a great there. title, it's a bait. great title. 100%, yeah. yes. I mean, the fundamentals of the article do have some weight, right? You know, he says that, you know, basically if the interest rates go up, the subtitle of this is that the Fed stoked this problem, meaning that they stoked this fire that's about to blow up. and. To, there are some unintentional side effects of dropping interest rates, right? So what happens is, I call it like the price index, yep. right? Or the affordability index, which is probably called a better, better term for that. So what happens is, let's say you've got a, a fixed budget of $1,600 a month that you can pay for housing. If interest rates decrease, the available amount of uh, loan that you can get goes up pretty substantially, right? Absolutely, so if yeah. we saw a rate drop from, and I have to go back and look at the stats, but you know, some from 4%, down to 2.875, which is roughly what we saw. Uh, I mean, that's about a 20% increase in the value of what you can purchase. And that's exactly what we saw last year, it was about 24%. Mm -hmm. And so if you take out the 20%, that means that the real home appreciation should have been about 4%, which is about right. You know, so like, what happens is if the interest rates go back up, we're gonna tap into that 20% of the actual, you know, the, the price inflation that we saw in the last year. That's what's having investors get a little bit nervous because we can't artificially depress interest rates in the long term, right? right. Like we'll see massive inflation, we'll see some issues there, some more uh, macroeconomic uh, problems when you have really inexpensive money. You know, people will be over leveraged, you know, puts a bit more systemic risk into the economy, and we don't like that. You know, we'd like to have people um, saving money, not spending money, and doing some different things. So, you know, I think there is a little bit of weight to the thing, but what he really, um, kind of missed on that was that, you know, the people that bought six months ago and they've experienced, you know, 12% appreciation. Since then, yes. Since then. Yeah. Well, if the market goes down 10%, they're still in the game, you know, and just because you're upside down in a house doesn't mean you're automatically going to sell it and I'll quit it to an automobile, right? You go out and you buy a brand new Jeep Cherokee or something like that, right? Um, and you drive it off the lot and it drops eight grand, but you don't turn around the day after you bought it and bring it back to the dealership and sell it for eight grand less than you just paid for it. That doesn't make sense, right? You're gonna drive it for the next three or four years and you'll probably enjoy it, you know, and you'll get some utility out of it. Just like you're not gonna just fire sale your house because you need a place to live. You know, even if you did overpay for it slightly, time will fix all wounds. And we've seen that from what we saw in 2008 to now. You know, if you bought the house at the worst possible time in the last cycle, which was like probably May of 2007, you're still right side up today. Yeah. You know, yeah, it took some time. But that was an unprecedented, unprecedented once in a lifetime event that we probably won't see again for a long time. And we put a lot of things in place like more strict underwriting guidelines, higher down payment requirements, you know, a little bit uh, stricter credit guidelines. And so, you know, I think, you know, the people that are in the homes that they're in now can actually afford them, you know. And so I don't think we're at a huge risk, you know, from what the headline says of actually, you know, having a depressed market or something where, 90% of homeowners have lost you know, a massive amount of equity to shed all this equity. I don't think that's gonna be the situation. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, even just like, uh, let me see, the guy's name was? Bukvar. Peter Bukvar. Bukvar, right? he, yeah. This was his warning, right? He said he singles out and puts, who puts out 5% down historically low, uh, low, low mortgage rates. If home prices correct by 10%, Bukvar sees a world of pain, right? Yeah, but see, not everybody's only putting five percent down. No, well, this is this is what I attested to. So obviously, becoming in the first half of this year, things were just intense. You know, mm -hmm. ten, twenty, thirty offers, paying twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars over asking price. Yeah. 
you know, some of those people that did pay over asking price, I'll, I wouldn't be shocked that a lot of them are probably at what that value is, right? Mm -hmm. the, the real true market value, mm -hmm. right? So even if we do see a 10% correction, like you were saying, time heals all wounds. And I'll case in point, my parents had a house that they purchased, um, I think in 2000. And to that, by 2007, it was worth 750 grand, mm -hmm. right? So the market happened. How well, much did they pay for it? Um, 300. Okay. Yeah. So more than double. Exactly, yeah. right? So, and we, I sold it for them 10 years later, like I said, market heals all wounds, um, for almost 600,000, right? So it recovered drastically. Mm -hmm. But like you said, that was something that we've never seen before. Right. Do we see something like that happening again? I don't expect to. Will there be some type of correction to where you could see like a 5, 10, maybe 15% correction? That's possibly likely, right? If, if mortgage rates actually do start to increase and like the buyer like you say, the buyer fatigue and the buyer pullback starts to go back even further and further, further, just like we're seeing here within Arizona. Yeah, we're starting to see price reductions. Mm -hmm. You and I talked about it on the episode that we put out, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, 24% of all home, active homes on market saw a price reduction, mm -hmm. right? So that is the reality that we're living in. And we're actually coming into our second peak, which is the fall here, historically speaking, within Arizona. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see, you know, those prices continue to go back up? Are they going to stabilize? Or are we going to see more reductions as part of what this market actually is because buyers are in a, especially within Arizona, are in a tough spot. Well, what Bouvier says is that, you know, buyer fatigue in its it's exactly in, right? what it you is setting in, right? And yeah. I think what's happening is that people are saying, wait a minute, I'm not going to spend, you know, a ridiculous amount of money for this house. You know, I'm going to wait and just kind of see. And so it might be a good thing. It might be a good thing because I, I like neutral markets. I don't like it to be, you know, really heavy buyer market or a really heavy seller market. I like to be kind of fluid and neutral. Good mix, yeah. And I think that's what we're going to go towards, and that's fine. But what I'm worried about is what a normal market actually is. It won't feel like a normal market. It'll feel like a depressed market because the velocity in the market has been so intense, like what you were going back to. You know, the beginning part of 2021 was insane, where we were seeing 50 offers. You know, Mike Anderson, one of our agents, had over 100 parties through his open house. You know, those things aren't going to happen, yeah. right? So when you have like two people through an open house, which is normal, it's not going to feel normal. Right, and so the the vision of normal or our version of normal been reality has been yeah. massively distorted. Distorted, yeah, absolutely. Yep, I totally feel the same way with you. Even if, guys, if you're if you're on the selling side, I was like, just just because your house goes on the market and you don't get an offer within a week or two weeks, there's nothing wrong with the home. Okay, right. nothing wrong with the home. Like you're saying, starting to normalize. Like mm -hmm. just two years ago, the average days on market was probably close to 50 days. Oh, at least I yeah. think it's more like 60. It was, or it, was, it was like yeah. 68, I think. But yeah. I was just trying to give like a little nice little meaning yeah. in there. If you're on the buy side, guys, great. I'm seeing there's definitely some relief that's happening right now in the market. If we start to see a, another peak come in through the fall, then this is probably a good time for you to really get back into the, the works, talking to the lenders, seeing exactly what you can afford. Because if you're looking to rent, Arizona has the highest increase in rental rates over the past year. Well, it was, it was like nine or three, between nine and 13%, which is insane. Insane, right? Yeah. So you're, you're stuck between two hard places. You know, do I afford, do I joke, do I joke, go and try and afford this house, or do I rent for another year? And then guess what? Those prices after another year, they may go up on the house, right? Yeah, and, the, and if those rates go up, then your payment goes up even further, yeah. as does the, the price of the home. So now you're stuck again in forcing the position. Do I rent or do I buy? Right? I think if you're renting right now, take a look at buying, because yeah. there's so many tax advantages to, you know, in this long-term investment where you're gonna be building equity, and you're paying down your actual principal balance on your loan. Mm -hmm. You're not doing that with rent your interest rate on rent is 100%, right? Like it's, it's all gone at yeah. the end of the month, you know? So at least if you own a home and you're paying down a mortgage, you're paying down your principal balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least it's going towards something. Yes, absolutely. Going towards something. And so, go, so guys, going back to the article that CNBC put out, if there is some type of correction, say it's like a 5, 10, 15% correction, I would say don't stress about it, don't worry. You know, you know if you're gonna be in there, I guarantee you didn't buy this house and live in it for a year. You're probably in it for like a three, five year, five to seven years is the average here within Arizona that individual or a family stays within a home. You'll gain that equity back and probably even then some, and you'll be at a fine position to where you actually won't be at a loss. If something like 2008 happens, none of us are going to be expecting it, right? It's going to be a complete blind side. And obviously we're just going to have to roll with the punches there, but just what we see that's happening in the market and you know what the trends are showing, that's not likely, but Potentially a correction. Okay? Yeah, I mean, if it, a correction, a couple of percentage points ain't gonna kill you. Yeah, yep. it's not. It's not gonna hurt. You'll be able to get the value back. There's plenty of people coming into Arizona and like leaving all the major cities to go to the outskirts, and so you'll see plenty of traction with that. So, 
Again, guys, thank you for tuning in to the Inside View Real Estate Podcast. I am your host, Josh Junior. This is Carl Freund. We'll see you on the next episode. We hope you have a beautiful day.